my name is Doug Hubble, and welcome to Astro Photography Tutorials. Today is part two of the California Nebula series videos, and today I will show you how I process the data. If you haven't seen part one, I'd recommend going back and you can download this exact same data set and follow along with my processing steps or process it however you would like to. Also, if you would, please return your process results back to me. I plan on making a part three video where I will show everybody's submissions and I want to feature your processed results. So please return them to dhubble at gmail.com. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at this data set that I have in, for you in the download. Uh, the, one of the things that uh, somebody came back to me and told me was that there were some frames that were already calibrated in here so I accidentally sent you uh, some frames that you probably should just remove uh, you can tell by the the, the date timestamp I mean this has a uh, 11:15 a.m. or excuse me 10:15 a.m. so I, I doubt seriously I was imaging at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning so I must have been uh, doing some processing so uh, very first thing you want to do is just go ahead and delete those out of there I'm sorry I, I included it in the set but hey that's the case review the uh, images that were, were taken you you want to remove any of the bad frames and that goes for every imaging session uh, in, in this case, the data set that you have here, we have this one image. Uh, you can see the California Nebula. It looks like it's kind of off skew. And, you know, compare it to uh, another frame. See how it's kind of like going from the upper left down to the lower right. And I think that would do, be a better representation uh, than this image where it looks like it cut off the top of it and it, you know, kind of comes down. So, uh, in this case what I'm going to elect to do I mean there's only a, I think three or four of these images like this and then about right there uh, uh, this image goes from you know left corner to lower right corner and what we'll do is if we stack these it'll leave this feathering edge kind of look on it and it really doesn't look the best so I, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those images that are uh, pointing up like that that way I'll have one nice processing stack to go with uh, as you kinda like thumb through them you'll notice how uh, the orientation of it, 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 it how, see how it kinda flips uh, what it did is it did a meridian flip but still the general area going from one corner to the other corner is still there and uh, one thing that you'll notice too is the dithering that's inside these images you'll see how the image is kind of like bouncing around just a little bit and what that dithering will do is it will uh, help make a better image and reduce some of the noise inside of the image. A two-part processing step I'm going to first stack uh, the images in Pix Insight and the the stacking that I'm doing is a, a, a video that I found very useful by uh, Richard Block I recommend if you want to get into the the details uh, Richard is very knowledgeable and he has a, a, a lot more detail on why uh, these different settings are used now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly run through the steps and uh, show you the results of them but if you want more detail and background on what's happening I highly recommend visiting Richard Block's uh, YouTube channel and checking out that video. I'll put a, a link here so you can check that out as well. So anyway, we get, let's get started with this. Uh, we're going to first start off and, and uh, make our, uh, our bias set. And uh, we're going to go to uh, Process, All Processes, and we're going to go to Image uh, Integration. Okay. We'll pull up that. We're going to add the files. In this case, we're working with the bias files. I gave you a ton of bias files here. I'm just going to go ahead and select them all and uh, say OK there or open them. And once they're open, the next step we're going to do is make some uh, changes on some of these uh, uh, little tabs here. Uh, the normalization, we're going to say no normalization. And we're going to say that we don't care 
all weights equal one. Uh, we're going to use here, these are the, the scale estimator. We're going to use MAD. We're going to generate uh, a generate integrated image. We're not going to evaluate the noise. And the rest of that looks good there. Uh, next, we'll go to pixel uh, rejection. And let's close that up a bit. And we're going to say pixel rejection. We're going to select uh, sigma clipping. And we're going to say no normalization. Uh, everything else here is just fine. And we're going to go to pixel rejection 2 next, which is right here. And what we'll go here is we'll say the low sigma 3 and high sigma 3. Select it. As you can see, it's starting to run through the um, calibration of uh, making the bias frames. You have three windows that will pop open here. Uh, this is your high, low, and then that's the integration or the master of it. Now you can take a look at this and see what kind of uh, values that it decided was uh, high and rejected it. Uh, one way you can do that is hit uh, Control A, and Control A will stretch it so you can see what is uh, what has been eliminated there. Really has no uh, value other than to re uh, review what has been rejected. Uh, you can do the exact same thing with uh, the low, Control A, and you can see what it rejected as low. And this right here will be our master bias, and we'll do a Control A here. And then now you can see the bias noise that's on the camera, and that's what we're going to use as our master bias to help remove that noise. File, save as. And in the folder here, I'm going to make a, a new folder and call it Masters. And in the Masters, I'm going to have another folder. I'm going to call it Calibration. Uh, I want to save it as an XISF file, not a TIFF file. And we'll call this uh, Bias master and I will go ahead and save that when it comes up through here uh, you can just go ahead and leave the uh, the defaults in there and say okay darks use the exact same kind of settings so after we've created the bias we can pretty much leave all of our settings at the the same let's go ahead and we will we'll close the uh, the bias master and we'll select all these and we'll say remove selected and then what we'll do is we'll add files and in this case we're going to our darts here and I'm going to add all the darts in there open those up and we'll just go through it very quickly here to make sure that we've got all the the same information in there it should be the same and in fact it does look good there and then we'll go to the pixel rejection two here or yeah picture rejection two looks good and then pixel rejection one looks good as well so now since we didn't change anything we can just go ahead and, and run this function and apply it the dark and I'll do a control a to show the pixel rejection on here on the high of the darks and then what we can do is take a look at the low Control A and look at what it rejected there. And then next we can look at our master dark frame. Control A and that's what it looks like when it's stretched. That's the dark frame. So what we want to do now is we'll want to save this frame, of course. So we'll do the exact same thing we did last time for the bias, save as. And we'll call this a, um, a dark master. So we'll call dark master and I want to save it as an XISF file and we'll go ahead and save it. Use the defaults. Okay. And image calibration of the flats. So we're going to go to process, all processes, image calibration. 
and here in the image calibration we're going to uh, select our original flats uh, what you can do let me clear these out and I'll uh, add the files all over again we'll say add files and this particular case these are the the originals that uh, have not been calibrated yet so we'll open those up and we're going to use an output directory uh, it's important to use an output directory if you don't do that it'll just throw it to the screen you won't get all of your your output but what I did here is I just went ahead and put it into uh, a flat calibrated hydrogen alpha folder and I'll just use that and the the bias and the master dark frames that we used uh, we have to go ahead and uh, use those master and dark bias from was an XISF file that we used uh, also uh, important that you're not going to have a master flat if you check the master flat because what we're doing is we're calibrating a flat right now but if you go ahead and you uh, uh, click it with that checked you'll get an error message and it'll say bah cannot create it uh, missing or invalid master frame okay yeah we don't want to use that because that's what we're working on is we're working on flats right now so we're using the master bias and the master dark we should be able to just go ahead and hit this and apply it globally and it should start running away there's an alpha by the way uh, that output directory that we told it to go to you could just check to verify and you can see that uh, by default that the the post fix on it is uh, underscore C uh, for calibrated so what we've done is we've taken the raw flats and we've calibrated the hydrogen alpha so what we need to do next is we need to do the exact same thing for the uh, the S2 on there so let's go ahead and do that next we'll go ahead and select all those and remove selected and we'll say add files and again this is the raw flats that are uncalibrated we'll go ahead and select this these are the for the s2 open those up and uh, nothing really need to change inside here except maybe the output directory so we'll go into here and uh, change the um, from calibrated uh, flats calibrated to the s2 and we'll select that folder and uh, we've got uh, our master bias selected our master dark and of course we don't have a master flat all that looks uh, fine to run with so we'll just go ahead and apply the the, the global button and let it run flats uh, calibrated we're going to do image integration to make a master out of each of those so we'll go to process all processes image integration and in here we're going to select uh, the flat files that we've already calibrated okay and we're making one master out of that particular calibrated of course uh, let me just go ahead I'm working with the hydrogen alpha first but let's go ahead and remove those so you can see that and I'll go to add files and this is again this is the, the the flats we've already calibrated not the original flats and we'll just go ahead and select those and then we'll go to our uh, image integration we're going to go to average we're also going to use the nom normalization as multiplicative and our weights don't care uh, the uh, the estimator scale let's change that and go to iterative uh, uh, k sigma use that one and I think the rest of that looks good there let's go into uh, pixel rejection one uh, pixel rejection one we look good at sigma clipping and everything else looks good there we'll go into uh, pixel rejection two and there we go the high and low of three that looks great so what we'll do is we'll apply it globally and let it run look at them here's the uh, high we'll do a control a stretches it out you can see a little bit more of it get rid of that there's the low look at that don't need that anymore and here's our um, integration so this is like our master uh, hydrogen alpha flat and we'll do control a here 
And once you we stretch it out here, you can see the vignetting that's going to be uh, helpful removing out of here. We've also got uh, uh, some dust motes on the, the lens there that, that will be taken care of too. So this is a, a good way of uh, using your flats. Now let's go ahead and do uh, File, Save As, and we've already um, got this set up in, in our masters. I got it under uh, calibration. And what this is, is this is the, uh, the master hydrogen alpha, and we'll call flat in front of that to kind of put it together, and XISF, of course, and we'll do a save. And the default's fine, OK, let it run, boom. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to go on to the, uh, uh, the S2. We have to make a, an S2 master flat as well. So let's go ahead and get that done. Uh, we'll go into here, <clears throat> go into here, select it all, remove the selected. We're going to add files, and we're going to go to the uh, S2s. And remember, you can tell, whoops, uh, you can tell these are the uh, calibrated ones. Number one, I've got it in a folder called... Uh, flats calibrated but also there's like a little underscore C for calibrated on there so we, we know that these are the uh, calibrated ones we'll open them up and we've already gone through all these uh, settings here since we just did the hydrogen alpha we do not need to change anything else so we're ready to go we'll just go ahead and hit the apply global and let it run results for the uh, S2 flats and control A uh, you can see the high values that were uh, rejected and take another look here at the low control A and you can see what was re uh, rejected there and then here this is the master uh, S2 flat control A to stretch that out and you can see again a very nice flat that uh, was created there so we'll do file save as one more time and this is the the flat master uh, S2 and we'll save that okay alright so we're done with the uh, master uh, flat there now what we're going to do is we're going to go on to uh, image calibration of the actual uh, images now so uh, we can close the image integration window down. We'll go to process, uh, all process, uh, image calibration. Let's go into here. And what we're going to do now is let's remove all those. And we're going to add our, um, our original hydrogen alpha ones. So let's go ahead and uh, get into there. There are the lights, there's the hydrogen alpha, there are all the hydrogen alpha uh, images we have. I'm going to open that up, select the output directory, and I'm going to go into the uh, lights folder. I made another uh, folder called calibrated, and I'm going to put hydrogen alpha, so I'm going to put all of the calibrated shots inside of there, so we'll say select folder. Uh, it's going to have the underscore C because it's going to be uh, uh, calibrated. And one of the things we're going to do now is that, you know, we have the master bias selected. We have the master dark selected. And what we're going to do here is we're going to check where it says calibrate. And we're going to also check the master flat now and we're going to use a master flat so let's go into here and find our master flat that was uh, here in masters calibration and master flat now the master flat we're looking for in this particular case is hydrogen alpha so we'll select that and now that we've got this selected begin the the calibration so hit the global apply button Running the uh, calibration on the hydrogen alpha, you can uh, actually browse to the folder wherever you put the calibrated version, see the underscore C. And it probably wouldn't be a bad idea at this point to maybe check it out and see what one of these images look like. 
we'll just go ahead and put that on there. Uh, again, you just select it and then hit Control A. One image after uh, being calibrated, and it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it uh, we'll stack it, and when we stack it, it'll even uh, look better. But this is just a singular one. Now what we'll do is we'll need to do the exact same thing and uh, create our uh, image calibration for our S2. So let's go ahead and close that out and get over here and select all of these and say remove selected. Add the files and again what we're looking at are our lights and these are S2 and they haven't been calibrated yet. These are uncalibrated versions of the S2. Select all of those, open, and we're going to put them out to an output directory and we'll go into here. These are going to be, when they're output, they're going to be calibrated, so we'll put it in the S2 calibrated, select that folder, and we've got everything else checked uh, the same way that uh, we needed before. So we'll just go ahead and apply that uh, globally. S2 uh, calibrated ones are out there and they in fact are. Uh, we can also do is uh, do a little uh, check on one of them and see what the results look like. Go ahead and control A. Oops, do that again, control A. And there you can see the stretched version of the S2. So we have the uh, uh, the S2 and the Hydrogen Alpha calibrated now. We're going to align or uh, align the stars up on each one of the uh, uh, the final calibrated uh, light frames here. So the way we do that is we go to Process, All Processes, and we go to Star Alignment. So when we pull up Star Alignment, we have to first select a reference image so you want to change that to a uh, file and then we're going to find a reference um, it's up to you which one you uh, decide you like to use I'm just going to use the first one in here and we'll say OK and uh, what we'll do on, on this is uh, a lot of what you see here is going to be uh, good just right out of the box here uh, we're going to add files. Now the files that we're going to add are going to be the uh, calibrated hydrogen alpha first since we're working with hydrogen alpha and we're going to select all those and uh, we'll have to select an output uh, directory and this output directory this is when they become uh, uh, registered so let's go into here we're going to um, lights and I think I'm just going to put it in a uh, folder called register. So we'll go into there. And we'll make another folder inside here. I'll call it uh, hydrogen alpha. And we'll select that folder. And what it will do, uh, this postfix is it'll put a, by default, uh, underscore R underneath it at the end of it. So uh, that's what we need to do next. We'll just apply that globally. In case you're not familiar with what uh, the star alignment will do for you, uh, over here on the left side, uh, this image has got the underscore C underscore R. So it's been calibrated and it's been registered. The one image over on the right that's the same image has no calibration. It's just the raw file. Uh, remember, we used this particular one as our reference image, so everything's going to line up according to this image. Uh, if you notice that after uh, star alignment, we'll click on the one that's after that, you can see this little black border that's kind of around it. And what it has done is it's done the alignment to make sure that this star sh shows up on the same area on all the images, so it aligns everything up. When an unaligned uh, image, it doesn't. It's just they're a little bit different in every way because we used the dithering in there, and it uh, will the image moves a little bit more each time that happens. So I wanted you to be aware of uh, the star alignment, so you understand what that that process is uh, there for. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and uh, get ready 
with more star alignment and we're going to uh, begin doing our our S2 okay, so for the S2 we're going to also going to select a file and uh, in this particular case I'm going to go ahead and select the S2 uh, calibrated one here and I'm just going to select the first one as my reference image and then what I'll do here we'll get rid of uh, those and remove them and we'll add the S2 files that are calibrated and we'll go ahead and grab those out open those up and then we'll go ahead and we're going to put the output directory we gotta change the output directory uh, register to a new folder let's call it uh, S2 and select that folder and then we're ready to apply that globally and let it run All right now for the fun part let's go ahead and uh, get ready to uh, in image integration uh, for the uh, hydrogen alpha we'll go ahead and close the star alignment we've already aligned uh, uh, stars we needed so let's go to process all processes image integration and what we're going to do here now is we're going to uh, integrate the uh, hydrogen alpha let's go ahead and remove all those that are in there we had before remove the selected and we'll add files now the uh, the the ones we want to select are the ones that are calibrated and registered those are the ones that have the underscore C and the underscore R they all have been aligned so let's go ahead and select all those open those up and let's go ahead and take a look at some of the image integration uh, buttons and stuff here uh, we will use uh, average and the normalization will be additive with scaling and uh, weights what we're going to do is we're going to do noise evaluation there and uh, the scale estimator iterative k sigma is fine there uh, general integrate or generate uh, integrated image correct uh, evaluate the noise um, let's see what else let's close this up here and go to uh, pixel rejection one and we want uh, sigma clipping good uh, normalization uh, we want to do scale plus zero offset and the rest of those are okay so that's fine and then uh, pixel rejection two uh, we've got low and high set at three so we'll go ahead and uh, apply globally and let it run the image integration you'll see of course like you you're familiar seeing now is you'll have a high and a low rejection so we can select it control a to stretch it and that's all the goodies that it decided was no good and let's reject it so that get rid of that uh, here we go here's the low uh, you can check it out you can see that on the corners here you can see where it was uh, doing a little bit of that feathering on there uh, right around the corners so we'll, we'll crop out that stuff a little bit later but uh, that you can just review that as well and then we get into the hydrogen alpha image integration let's do control a and whoo yeah that's what I'm talking about we got some nice uh, deep sky image quality there. That looks beautiful. So uh, now that we have this, uh, what I like to do uh, is go ahead and save it. So let's do save as. And let's go into the masters. And we'll go into here and I'll make a folder called lights. And this is the hydrogen alpha. Hydrogen Alpha in GC 1499 and XISF and we'll go ahead and save that. Say OK. Let it go. Go ahead and uh, get on now to the uh, S2. We're going to do some image integration on there and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll uh, get rid of all these files and remove so, uh, those. 
Then we're going to add the files, and of course we're going back to the registered S2 images. Select all those, we'll open those up, and now that we've got all those uh, opened up, uh, I think everything else is just ready to go. Right, have the results back of the S2 uh, stacked here. Do another little quick check on that shows all the uh, rejected high values in there. We'll close that out. And ew, look at that. Looks like maybe I might have left in some of those other uh, images that were uh, a, a bit off there. So maybe I'll have to go back and review those uh, S2 images. I didn't review them, and it looks like I think I might just do that. You can see that now in the uh, uh, rejection here. Uh, there were some images that it lined up perfectly, and there was a few others that... Uh, we're outside of those uh, uh, box area there, so that's a that's a good clue. Okay, um, let's take a look and see what the uh, S2 looks like now. It doesn't look too awfully bad. Uh, I think it looks okay. I might just go ahead and take that and run with it, uh, see how that works out. Uh, I'll go ahead and give that a shot. So let's do uh, file uh, save as, and let's save it first as a uh, XISIF, XSIF file. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. And we'll call this the S2. S2. And save it. OK. Do star alignment under processes. All processes. Star alignment. And we're going to do is we're going to align uh, the uh, stacked images uh, make sure that they're all lined up now uh, you want to select a file of course and we're going to go to the file we're going to use a, a, a master reference image and in this case I want to use the uh, hydrogen alpha as my uh, registered image for the the set and uh, the files that I want to add inside here uh, Let's go ahead and add the files. Now, first I, I, I did this and I uh, only selected the S2, but let me add both of the files uh, in there so we get an output with the uh, underscore R on, on both of those. So we'll open those up. Oh, got that in there twice. Let's go ahead and uh, remove the selected. So let's go ahead and uh, remove selected. Now we've got the hydrogen alpha and we got the S2 stacked ones in there. And we're going to put it to an output directory. And of course, we want to make sure we put it to our, our our master lights. And these are registered ones. So we'll select that current folder and apply that globally and let it run. The two files that we just registered and aligned together. Uh, we don't need to use star alignment anymore. And uh, let's, let me just show you something here. Let me do uh, Control A and stretch it all out. And one thing you'll notice with this is that if you take it and you kind of like drag it over the, the top, it kind of gives it a, a, a luminance that you can kind of see over and see how the stars line up on it. So when you put it over the very top of it, you don't see any uh, double stars, you know, when you take it off just a little bit. So that's a good way of testing that, yeah, hey, everything's lined up and it's, it's ready to go. So what we need to do now uh, is change these X... ISF files into TIFF files. I can do some post-processing in Photoshop, so I'll do a save as. And uh, this is a registered image. Uh, I'm not going to make it XISF. XISF. I'm going to make it a TIFF. So I'll go into TIFF, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and save this. And unfortunately, Photoshop can't do 32-bit, so we'll go to 16-bit, and I'll say OK. And that, that is saved. And then I'll go on to my hydrogen alpha next. And I'll do file save as. And again, uh, we're going to make a TIFF out of this. And we'll say save. 16-bit. Uh, and OK. In Photoshop now, I wanted to show you a first stab that I tried with this. And I uh, guarantee you. Uh, probably won't turn out anything like this. Uh, a lot of times the the steps I do are different each and every time but anyway let's go ahead and get into this uh, here's our S2 our hydrogen alpha and we're gonna have to make a third channel uh, when we get to that 
we have to make a synthetic uh, third channel. But anyway, let's go into this and we'll start off with uh, throwing some curves up at it. Uh, what I like to do is I like to make a, a, a copy just from the original. So I just drag it down here and throw it up there. Uh, Control M is what we can do to pull up the curves. And there we go. I'll just go ahead and I'll grab that down low and kind of yank that up hard. Uh, what I'm doing when I do this, I don't want to do a flat line like that. Uh, anytime you do that, you have the potential to maybe clip some data. So we want to make like a nice little curve there. We'll say OK. And uh, we'll try that one more time. Control M. And as now you can start to see the, the data is starting to get a little bit thicker right there. Usually about two or three curves and that'll start bringing out uh, a lot of the data. Oh, uh, you can start to see it in the preview now just a little bit. So we'll bring that down. Okay, so that is the second curve. And we do see a little bit of data. So let's go ahead and keep on pumping it up here. Uh, now you can see this uh, graph right here. It's starting to come out a little bit more. So let's go ahead and bump that up. Uh, one thing you can see right here, we're starting to get some of that nice data in there. So let's go ahead and pull that down just a bit. Okay, so that was the third curve right there. Uh, let's see what it looks like one more time in the histogram. We'll do Control M. And you can see these little teeth, these little spikes right here that's a good indicator that you're getting about uh, as much as you'll want to uh, stretch it out. If you get much further then you really start to get into a little bit of a, an, an overexposure there. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is right there. Use some other tools to help bring out some more of the details on the uh, image. Uh, I like using some of uh, Noel Carboni's uh, astronomy tools. They're really a, a, a great set of tools. You just press a button and just kind of sit back and watch it. Uh, there's one part that I like to do in here and we can take a look and see how this will work but it's called local contrast enhancement. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and hit the play button and we'll let that run. So that worked out uh, pretty well. Let's see what it did before and after. So let's go into this you can say as a layer on top and you hit this play button one more time and then it says after action so if we take and toggle this off and on we can see where it hasn't in fact enhanced the contrast on there let's just zoom in a little bit more so we can we can see it There's about a hundred percent right there so you take a look uh, before and then after uh, some of the things with the Noel Car Carbonis is that you can see right now um, it took it to 8-bit and 8-bit really isn't the best to uh, process the image in so we'll go back to image and we'll go to mode and we'll say 16-bit so we have a 16-bit image back again here here's this one this one's 16-bit so here's uh, the after action again in us uh, 16 bit. So we did some uh, a local contrast enhancement on there. And now let's try something else. I'm going to try the enhanced DSO and reduce stars. Now this one takes a little while, so I'll go ahead and run that action. After the action is done, let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what it looks like before and after. We'll go over here and say as a layer on top, and we'll put that on there. And now we can see the difference before and after. Uh, there is a little bit more detail in there, n not much, but I'll just go ahead and, and, and leave that in there. And also remember that it took it and converted it into 8-bit, so let's go back to the image mode and convert it back up to 16-bit. All right, so now uh, let's zoom in a little bit on it and take a look and see what we got here. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and uh, try another uh, little trick here. Let's go to um, let's go ahead and make a copy of this. So we'll make a copy, and with this copy right here, we're gonna do a little bit of sharpening on it. Now, the uh, the way that uh, I like to use is a filter, other, high pass. 
Now with the uh, high pass filter, what you can do is you can uh, go ahead and bring out some more of the detail. Now, let's back this out just a little bit so we can see a little more of it. And let's see what we got here. Well, that looks decent right there. Uh, see how over here it's bringing out some of the, the details in the sharpening? So we'll just say, uh, okay, you just have to play with the radius and, and see what's best there for you. Then after that, then you just go to uh, uh, make that a soft light. And there you go. You have a, a, a sharpened image now that looks... Uh, pretty good can um, decide if we want to maybe bring out some of the the, the detail there with the layer mask uh, what we can do is we can go to layer layer mask hide all and when we've hidden it now we can just maybe zoom in and maybe just pick out some of the details we want to come out and have sharpened and not necessarily the whole entire uh, image here. So let's pick out the paintbrush and we've got like a black mask right there so we'll use a white paintbrush and poke like holes through that mask. So i uh, go ahead and just start sharpening it up. Uh, I can use the open and close square brackets and get a bigger uh, stroke there and you can see the detail of this particular area start to come out a little bit more uh, of the selected areas where we wanted it. Uh, the layer mask is really one of uh, the best tools in, in uh, Photoshop. You can take out and you can bring out just certain details without having to affect the entire image, which is really very nice. Kind of like taking out the nebula and just uh, painted over it with the white brush and then just bringing out the, the details that I want. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to zoom back out so and get a better look at it. And there we go. We can just kind of like uh, do that and paint it out. Now, what you can see uh, with this is you can do another thing, which is called a filter, a uh, blur, a Gaussian blur. And what the Gaussian blur will help do is it'll help blend it together a little bit better. Uh, let me show you what I mean here when we zoom out on it. See how it's kind of like a feathered edge to that? So it gives it kind of a blending effect. And that can just be as however much you want, uh, just depending on, on how much blending you want to uh, come with the image there. Now that should be good right there. So we'll just say OK there. And then now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click on this and tell it to merge down. So now we've got this one layer here that's uh, been applied with the sharpening on it. We can take it off and we can see what it was before and then after. So we'll go ahead and, and, and use that as the final uh, step there. Uh, so we'll move on now to our S2 layer. Kind of things that we did with the hydrogen alpha filter. First what I'll do is I'll take that and make a, a copy of it. And uh, we did three curves in the last time we were out here. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We'll do Control-M. And again, the very first uh, time here, we'll just uh, grab it down at the bottom and yank that up really uh, high. And then bring it down just a bit and never have it top off at the top there because if you do, you're, you'll end up clipping data. So let's bring it down just a little bit more. And we'll say OK. A, a curve really doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Uh, if you just you know go ahead and you, you yank it up like that, and then grab a little bit and bring it down. It's uh, doesn't have to be precise. You know you don't have to match it exactly. So there's uh, two curves right there. So let's go ahead and control M it and do it again. Uh, you can see that bell graph. We're starting to get a little bit of data in, in, inside there. Um, let's go ahead and bring that down just a bit right there. And we'll say OK. And we can see the S2 data now starting to come out. Control M. And we might be able to go one more stretch here. Uh, you can see the, 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 the teeth are just starting to comb right here. So maybe just a little bit on there we can go, uh, maybe not too far because it's 
getting really close to being done now so we'll just say OK there and uh, let's do this uh, control in one more time and now you can definitely see that how we've got uh, a little bit of uh, uh, those those teeth inside the graph there so we'll just hit cancel here so what we'll do now is we'll go back and do the uh, exact same things we did and uh, I'll do a local contrast enhancement on there and we'll just go ahead and fire that off and we'll do as a layer on top okay and then what we're going to have to do it convert it to 8 let's go back into 16 bits all right now what we can do is uh, let's go ahead and fire up the uh, enhanced DSO and reduce stars so it's applied to the S2 I really didn't like that so I decided to just remove that so I'm not going to use that one at all but uh, let's go ahead and use the high pass filter and uh, try to sharpen up some of the areas here so I'll make a, a, a copy of it right here and what I'll do now is we'll go to filter uh, other and high pass and we use this is about the what we used on the uh, the other one as well so uh, we'll just go ahead and take that and say okay and then we'll do this and we'll say uh, soft light and we don't want to apply the sharpening on everything we're going to do like we did before and do a layer uh, layer mask and we're going to hide it all and now we've got this little black pane that we're going to do is we're going to poke some holes through it so we'll get the paintbrush out we've got our white selected and we're going to paint a hole through the black uh, mask there so I'll just go ahead and start sharpening in uh, these details on the nebulosity in the in the center of there so that's looking uh, nice there alright and then um, the last thing we want to do then right now is uh, let's go ahead and put a filter blur Gaussian blur on there so let's do that right now back this out a little bit and you can kinda see how it's blending in and it's not just a harsh uh, uh, transition so we'll just go ahead and accept that and now what I'll do is I'll uh, right click and merge this down so this is our uh, layer that we have right at the moment now the S2 and the hydrogen alpha what we have to do next is we have to um, kind of make the backgrounds uh, equal on here uh, right now I look at the hydrogen alpha and you see that uh, there's a uh, uh, a difference in the backgrounds and we, what we want to do is we want to try to uh, equalize these backgrounds so what we can do here is try to find the, the darkest point on the uh, the image and we'll uh, make that our black point so let's go into the uh, hydrogen alpha do control L and we'll bring up the levels and what we can do is go into the, uh, the and set the black point so I'm gonna double click this and that'll pull pull up with uh, the black point now the black point right now is set at 40 so we're gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 40 so we'll, we'll go right here and select the uh, the eyedropper tool and we'll find a, uh, a black area where there isn't any nebulosity in the in the corner here and I'll uh, go ahead and click that and then I'll say OK and then if we look back at, at it now we have uh, a black point and it's kind of made everything pop together really nice so what we'll do next we'll apply that same kind of area we'll go up into the S2 and we'll apply that exact same location and apply the levels so we'll do control L set that black point out and we'll just hit this right up here in the corner click on it and we'll say OK now if we back it out on out uh, now we've got uh, backgrounds that are uh, closer to one another we have to make a synthetic uh, third channel and what I'm gonna do with that is I'll just go ahead and take each one of the 
the S2 and the uh, Hydrant Alpha and combine them to make the third channel. So I'll do Control A, select all, and Control C, copy it, then File, New, and we go to New, we'll just, I don't know, let's take it to resolution 300 for the heck of it. I'll say OK, and now what I'll do is do a Control V and paste that, and now we have the S2. I'll just go ahead and name that S2 so we know which one that one is. It's really not too hard. We look at the hydrogen alpha. Wow, it's really a nice looking hydrogen alpha. Control A, select it all. Control C, copy it. Go back inside here and Control V and paste that right on top of it. So when I'm making this synthetic channel, uh, I know there's a lot of different ways and uh, the way I'm doing isn't really very scientific. Uh, I'm just going to uh, take the opacity and kind of bring the hydrogen alpha uh, down. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's see. There's the hydrogen alpha right there by itself. Let's let's bring it up a little bit and bring the S2 in there. And let's see here. Just something that's a little bit different than the. Uh, the other two images. So this is the synthetic one. Let's take a look and see what the differences are. Okay. Yeah, there, there's a there's a there's a difference between the uh, there. So let's just go ahead and give that a try. I'm not really certain uh, how that will uh, will behave there, but uh, we'll go ahead and merge that down. Right click, merge it down, and we'll just call this uh, synthetic. All right. Okay. So now we have uh, three channels. So let's go ahead and combine them all together now. Uh, Control A, select it all. Control C, copy it. This is the hydrogen alpha. We'll do File New. And in this case, uh, what we're going to do this time around is it's not going to be grayscale. We want RGB color. So I'll say OK. And then what we're going to do here. Uh, is we're going to go to the uh, channels and normally the way this works is hydrogen alpha is mapped to the green channel so we'll go ahead and paste that right inside there now we're going to go to the S2 and we'll do a control A select it all control C copy it and then we'll go back into this uh, combined image here and we'll put the S2 in red and we'll control V paste it right there and then the next step we'll do is we'll go to the blue channel and that blue channel is going to be this synthetic one that we created so control A control C copy it and let's go back into the blue channel and paste that in control V and there's our image so let's try processing that next and just drag it down here make a copy of it uh, getting to this point uh, it's all personal preference on colors and how you want it to look uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll end up playing around with some of the colors just to see what I can come up with uh, I'm gonna try image adjustment and I'm gonna go to selective color and what I'll try doing and I really don't know if this what this will look like but uh, we'll just give it a few tries here and see what we come up with I'll take the cyan and take the whoops let's make that uh, yellow let's boost that up to a hundred we'll just say okay there and then we'll do another uh, image adjustment uh, selective color and this time what I'll do is I'll go to the greens a little bit of the greens there and when you get into this like I say you can just play around and kind of you know find out what works and what doesn't work. There really isn't any uh, set rules. Uh, I'll drop that down to a minus hundred and I'll take the magenta and let's just bring that down a little bit uh, to minus 25 on the greens. Okay and then we'll go to uh, one more time image adjustment selective color and now let me see we got a little bit of yellow in there let's just see if we can make the yellow do something different uh, let's take the cyan and uh, bump that 
to minus 100. Uh, let's take the magenta, pop that up to plus 25. Okay. Um, let's see here now. Try one more time. Image adjustment, selective color, and let's try uh, cyan's one more time. So let's go to the cyan and uh, drop that down just a bit. And let's take the yellow and uh, drop that as well. Okay, say okay there. And let's see, what else can we try here? Um, let's tr now it's getting kind of yellow. Let's go to image, um, adjustment, selective color. And let's take the yellow and possibly let's bump that up to plus 100. Let's drop the magenta down just a little bit. Uh, let's try that. Uh, yellow plus. Let's see what it looks like with that. Okay. It's getting somewhere. Uh, so I'll say okay there. Now, uh, image uh, adjustments. Let's go to the match color and see what we can do with that. Let's go to the color intensity, uh, bring it up just a bit. Let's see about the luminosity, our luminance. Yeah, looking a little bit green, but let's say okay there. Make a copy of this and let's try this. We'll do some more uh, selective color adjustments. Let's see if I can bring a little bit of uh, California gold out of there if I can. Let's do this. Let's go to selective color and we'll go to uh, cyan and we'll make that uh, minus 100 and we'll take the magenta bring that down just a bit uh, minus 25 okay then image adjustment uh, let's do it again selective color and let's go to the yellows now. Let's go to yellows and we'll take the cyan and drop that down. Let's bring out some of the uh, gold that I was looking for. And the magenta, I'll pop that up. I'll bring a little bit more gold out of there. So we'll say okay there. And let's just take a look at before, after. That's uh, getting kind of close to what I want there. Let me just try one more. Let's do. Uh, image adjustment uh, selective color let's try the cyan one more time and let's see if we take the yellow and drop that down well, would that make a difference not really okay so we'll just uh, leave it the way it is right now and what I'm gonna do with this I'm gonna do uh, a, a layer a layer mask and I'm gonna hide it all so now I've got a little bit of a green and I've got a little bit of a gold uh, right inside here so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just gonna try to enhance uh, some of these uh, nebulosity spots by uh, just painting out a little bit of gold in there so let's just go ahead and start painting this out and uh, like I was telling you earlier with the layer mask you have this uh, power ability to uh, precisely put in uh, different things that you want so I'm just gonna uh, start outlining some of this uh, detail here and uh, we'll see what this looks like I don't know how this is gonna turn out but let's go ahead and just start painting some of this up maybe just give it a little bit more character other than just uh, the plain image there uh, and like uh, most of the time astrophotography is a, a lot of art and a little bit of science and so when you get right down to it and you start making a, an image uh, there really is no rules uh, you can make whatever color you like uh, matter of fact most everything you see is is false color to begin with when you are out uh, looking at all these images especially the narrow band it's just made up of uh, a bunch of different colors so uh, let's do this now let's go into uh, filter blur 
a Gaussian blur and let's take a look and see what this looks like now that looks like it's a really uh, big blur let's see if we bring that down just a bit bring out some of the gold yeah that I, I think I'm liking that right about there so I'm just gonna say okay there try it something here let's go to uh, image adjustment and let's try match color on there uh, just see what that does to it let's pop that up yeah that kinda brings out some uh, more color there uh, let's see Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll just say okay, and uh, let's zoom in on it and take a look at it. Uh, it's got some different kinds of colors. There's some reds, there's some greens, and there's some yellows inside there. So, uh, you know, that's it didn't turn out the same way uh, the first one did. Here's the, the first version of it, and then here's what it looks like the second time around. So, uh, it never turns out the same. Yeah, for me anyway. Uh, if this is your first time watching, I would like you to subscribe. I publish two astrophotography videos on the 1st and 15th of every month. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.